why do you do what you do? Where where does it come from in your heart and your soul? You know. Thank you. It's a it's a beautiful and hard question, and I, I, it occurs to me that I I sort of stumbled into this. I didn't. I, I ended up here, and and I and I I don't know what else to do right about now. And and the answer that I wrote was that I believe in its potential. I believe in the ethos of its genesis, acknowledging Fred Kent for coining the phrase. And I believe if we look after that word and remember what it's for, it, it's asking us to work differently together. And boy, we need that right now. So, so the amount of times in my job, this is coming out my eyeballs or my eyes pop because I just know how important it is and a sense of, I, I sort of want to say calling without sounding too much like a nerd again, but we know we've got to change the way we're doing things. And I, I really believe in this word as one of the words that can help us think differently and, and think better as, as Jules said, from from place and, and together. Okay. And if I ask the same of you, Denise, particularly for you, because you have a business and you need to earn a living, um, <laughs> which is not to say that Jules and Fritz don't, but... but oh, they're uh, silver platter people. They don't need to earn a living. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, no I, I, I've come from a local government and government job. So, you know, it's... That the world of entrepreneurship is is pulls apart you know it's so difficult when you actually have to earn your living and you have to go out there and you have to scrounge that sale and you're doing a sale in something that you fundamentally believe in but you still need to earn a living and and it still has a, a dollar at the bottom line you know to help you continue to do what you do because you still need to put kai on your table you still need to to feed the fan out so so with with that the question is why do you do what you do and what you know how have you gotten into it as a business so you you know as a social enterprise so catalyze we would call sophia can correct me if i was wrong because she was working on the strategy this morning a social change agency and um you're totally right we have to make money and a profit and pay the people that work for us, we work in a really flat structure. If anyone knows of um, Frederick Lalu's work on teal organizations, we have a quite a tight core and a lot of collaborators. And we believe in paying people well and fairly because especially in the arts, you're often asked to gift things. Um, and that can be really tricky actually to get good money for this kind of work. Um, we're also a social change agency. I and mean, for us at least we're focused on contributing a sounds of but like both all of us have been talking about, we want to contribute to a more equitable, caring and flourishing Aotearoa. Um, and we really believe that community building is part of that and placemaking is a strategy for us. Um, so we exist, if you like, to help communities to imagine and create good lives. One of the things you said earlier at the beginning is how to make places worth living in. So we want to ask says who, who says this is worthwhile and who says it's not and how and how are they involved. So essentially to imagine and create good lives that matter for each and all. COVID shows us 45 cases today, sorry everybody. Oh. Um, <clears throat> yeah. COVID shows us that we're all only well, we're each only well when all of us are well. And so that's really important to us. And we're only well when our place is well too. So all the stuff that Fritz said and all the stuff that Jill said. Um, in terms of, um, I guess, making money, um, we balance those, those two things there. And actually the business of placemaking is resourced by a mix of, mix of enterprise, of grants and contracts for us. So if your bottom line is only money, this is not the approach for you, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but we do get paid and we find that a mix of supporting in-place activations projects and working on systems change is a viable mix for us. So the entrepreneurial stuff is in the enterprise stuff. Things like we've got is probably some, hopefully lots of people know about the Coomer Awards that we just started them last year. Um, we just thought this was a good idea and so we did them. And we had a bit of support and this year we've got a bit more support, quite a lot more support. And, and so it is. So we're starting to use something like the Kuma Awards in Placemaking Aotearoa. These are systems and structures to speak beyond our bubble because we only get change when we actually move beyond our bubble. And so we need to work out what language matters for those people and work at their pace or a little bit faster. A whole bunch of strategies you we use in community building actually um, and when we can do that then people can see value and they will pay you so it's a mix like that I know that's probably a really complicated answer but it is 
that complicated. And we work in a Robin Hood model. So we will charge people who can afford to pay what they can afford to pay. Um, and we do a lot of gifting as well. Um, but we can't do all the gifting. So it means we've got to be strategic and selective. Um, but that's kind of good too, because we're not trying to create an empire. We're trying to grow capacity with others. So how do we work with others and help them do what they want to do? Step out of the way. Jules, why do you do what you do? Well, um, start with a bit of fucker papa. Um, so I, those who don't know me, I know a few on the call. So good to see people who I know. So good. Um, I have a sport and recreation background. And so I went into sport and recreation because as a Māori, we get told that we're good at sport, yeah? You're so good at sports. Maybe you should study that. Okay, I went and studied that. But what I really was looking for was somewhere where I could have fun. So I just wanted to play and have fun and get, and get paid for it. Um, I didn't really care about sports clubs and, and how they're set up. They're a whole different kind of place-making space, which needs some, some things. Um, which some of my old colleagues on this call can talk about one day. Um, so, so I kind of went through this pathway of, yes, I want to try and find a space where that's fun. And I want to try and find the space where I can bring people on this fun journey with me. Or is there a place where there's people who are having fun that I can go and join what they're doing? And that kind of took me down this like community development route and into this space of, oh, wow, people there's people out there who are doing really cool things. And so kind of shifted my lens to um, seeing um, that whole community led um, or Danatahi led or whoever it is led opportunities and just going, okay, cool. So then how do I support that to continue? How do I support that to happen? Um, so that we're not constantly being um, told what to do or how to do things. And I think that also comes from my um, I have maybe have a little bit of an issue with, with authority and <laughs> potentially being told what to do. Um, Denise can also vouch, vouch to that, can't you, Denise? Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so it, it hasn't been a straightforward journey. And if you ask me if I was a placemaker, I would never say that I'm intentionally working on in placemaking. I'm working um, probably for the people, um, for the tail and the whenua. And because um, in my heart, that's where that's where I see and feel change can happen. So um, yeah, I guess that's my journey and how I how I got here. And I won't ever stop working for people, I don't think, in Tail and the Fenua, because I that that's how you create change, right? 